hello everyone in this video we are going to see what is fermentation and we are going to talk about the products which can be produced by using fermentation techniques in large quantities okay okay let's see about what is fermentation this word fermentation is derived from a latin word fervere the meaning for fervere is to boil then we can define the fermentation in many ways okay here we have defined the fermentation in microbiological way so in microbiological way definition for fermentation is any process for the production of useful products through mass culture of microorganism okay so fermentation is nothing but any process for the production of useful products using microorganisms okay then this fermentation process can be classified into five major groups okay the five major groups of fermentation process are the number one production of microbial cells that is microbial biomass production second one production of microbial enzymes and third one production of microbial metabolites and fourth one production of recombinant products by using microbial culture and the fifth one is the transformation process that is in transformation fermentation process we are changing the compound by using some bio catalyst okay first let's see about the production of microbial biomass okay this production of microbial biomass may be divided into two major processes okay so one is production of yeast okay so production of yeast this yeast is used in the baking industry and brewing industry then wine making okay so example for yeast is saccharomyces cerevisiae then another one process production of microbial cells okay here we are producing only yeast that yeast is used in some industries that is in baking industry brewing industry and in wine making industry in this process we are producing microbial cells this is also known as single cell protein the microbial cell itself used as a human food or animal feed okay next let's see about this single cell protein and example for this single cell protein single cell proteins are the dead dried cells of microorganisms or it is purified protein isolated from microorganism cell culture and it is used in animal feed as flattening poultry calves pigs and fish okay then it also used as nutritional supplements for human being example spirulina okay. then these single cell proteins have nearly 60 to 80 percentage protein content in them on dry matter basis so only it is used as nutritional supplements for human being and also it is used as an animal feed okay then it contains high quantity of essential amino acids like methionine and lysine okay then single cell proteins are produced by using conventional substrates like starch fruit waste molasses okay example or chlorella chlorella is, is a fungi so due to the very high protein content the serve to improve protein deficiency in animals and it can be used as a feed for production of animal protein then spirulina spirulina is a cyanobacteria and it is very highly digestive protein and it contains high percentage of digestible protein that is 62 to 72 percentage and also it has vitamins amino acids and other nutrients so it is used as a supplemented food in diets of undernourished poor children in developing countries let's say about the next process production of microbial enzymes okay so enzymes have been produced commercially from animals plants and microbes okay so when you compare to these three the advantage is more in production of enzymes from microbes okay so using established fermentation techniques we can produce microbial enzymes in large quantities also it is infinitely easier to improve the productivity of your microbial system compared to a plant and animal one then the advent of our DNA technology that is recombinant DNA technology has enabled enzymes of animal origin that is enzyme from the animal okay also we can synthesize by using microorganisms okay so 
using our dna technology and fermentation technology we can produce the enzyme from animal origin in large quantities by using microorganisms example for microbial enzymes are amylase so we can produce amylase using fungal system and this amylase is using in baking and brewing industry then the enzyme protease from fungal and bacterial system is used in brewing industry leather industry and meat industry then lactase enzyme from the yeast is used in dairy industries then the enzyme pectinase from fungal is used in coffee industries and for making fruit juices okay the third process is production of microbial metabolites so these microbial metabolites are of two types one is primary metabolite and secondary metabolite so first let's see about what is this primary metabolite and secondary metabolite when it is formed by the microorganism during its growth phase okay so we know that the growth of a microbial culture can be divided into four stages okay so the first stage is lag phase after you inoculating your culture into the nutrient medium there is a period during which growth does not appear to occur okay there won't be any growth in the nutrient medium okay this period is known as lag phase okay so what will happen during this phase so in this phase there will be a adaptation of your microorganisms according to the nutrients present in the medium okay so this lag phase is also known as time of adaptation okay this is your lag phase in the graph and this period is known as time of adaptation then your second phase is log phase okay after the time of adaptation your microorganism enter into the log phase okay so this is your log or exponential phase and in this log phase growth rate of the cells gradually increases so it increases gradually and there will be a growth at constant and maximum rate so this period is known as log phase or exponential phase in this phase you can see the appearance of your microorganism on the nutrient medium so after the log phase the microorganism enters into the stationary phase okay in this stationary phase the growth ceases and cell starts to die so here the number of cells growing is, is equal to number of cells dying okay so this period is stationary phase okay so after stationary phase uh, the further period of time is known as death phase so here the number of viable cells decreases as the number of death cell increases so this phase is known as death phase so you can see the number of colonies disappear on the nutrient medium growth of microorganism is divided into four stages that is log phase that is time of adaptation and log phase that is exponential phase and stationary phase and death phase okay as like the kinetic expression of the growth the behavior of culture may also be described according to the product in which stage it is produced okay so we can classify this growth curve into two phases according to the product in which stage it is produced so the two stages are tropophase the next one is idiophase okay first let's say about the tropophase so this phase is equivalent to log or exponential phase so during the log phase what is happening the growth of the cells increases at constant and maximum rate so the cells should produce some product which is essential to the growth of the cells so these products include amino acids nucleotides proteins nucleic acids lipids carbohydrate etc so the products which are produced during this tropophase are known as primary products of metabolism also known as primary metabolites so the phase in which primary metabolites are produced is known as tropophase in competitive exams in one word they will ask in which phase primary metabolites are produced in your bacterial growth curve so the answer is tropophase okay and many of these products of primary metabolism that is prim primary metabolites are considerable e economic importance so we are producing these primary metabolites by using fermentation the next one is idiophase so this phase is equivalent to stationary phase so during the stationary phase some microbial culture synthesizes which 
or not produced during the tropophase okay so some compounds not produced during the log or exponential phase that is tropophase will be produced in the stationary phase okay and these products doesn't have any obvious function in cell metabolism these compounds are referred to as secondary products of metabolism or secondary metabolites and the phase in which they are produced are known as idiophase okay so the products which are produced in log or exponential phase is known as primary products of metabolism and the phase is known as tropophase and the product which are produced during the stationary phase is known as secondary products of metabolism so uh, also known as secondary metabolites and the phase in which they are produced are known as idiophase okay and these secondary metabolites have antimicrobial activity also has some pharmacological properties and it may be used as specific enzyme inhibitors and growth promoters so we are producing these secondary metabolites also in large quantities by using fermentation techniques so let's see some example for primary metabolites and the microorganism which is used to produce these primary metabolites so acetobacter aceti is a bacteria which is used to produce acetic acid and methylophilus methylotrophus bacteria it is also used to produce glutamic acid and pseudomonas denitrificans a bacteria used to produce vitamin b12 then saccharomyces cerevisiae a fungi is used to produce ethanol and saccharomyces lipolytica is used to produce citric acid example for secondary metabolites are penicillium chrysogenum fungi is used to produce penicillin then chrysophus nigricans fungi is used to produce steroids and streptomyces aerofusciens is an actinomyces used to produce tetracycline then streptomyces griseus it is also an actinomyces it is used to produce streptomycin so these are example for secondary metabolites for processes production of recombinant products so, so the advent of our dna technology that is recombinant dna technology has extended the range of potential fermentation products okay because using this our dna technology we can transfer genes from higher organism into microbial cells such that these recipients are capable of synthesizing the foreign proteins and a wide range of microbial cells have been used as host for such system that is these microorganisms are used to transfer the foreign gene and it will secrete the foreign protein okay so examples are e coli saccharomyces cerevisiae filamentous fungi example for the products which are used by using genetically engineered organisms include interferon insulin human serum albumins factor 8 and 9 epidermal growth factor cough chymosin and bovine somatostatin okay so which are some examples for the products which are we are getting from a genetically engineered microorganism we are producing these products in large quantities by using fermentation technology then the last process is the transformation process okay so in transformation process microbial cells are used to convert a specific compound into structurally related compound and financially more valuable compound because these microorganisms can behave as chiral catalyst so using this we can change a compound just structurally related to that compound with high positional specificity and stereo specificity okay so microorganism behave as a chiral catalyst with high positional specificity and stereo specificity then there are methods uh, chemical methods which are used to convert a compound to structurally related compound but compared to chemical method microbial methods are more specific and it enable the addition removal or modifications of functional group at specific sites on a complex molecule without the use of chemical protection the reactions which may be catalyzed include so what are the catalyst process the microorganism can do is dehydrogenation oxidation hydroxylation dehydration and condensation decarboxylation amination deamination and isomerization 
and these microbial process have the additional advantage over chemical reagents of operating at relatively low temperature and pressure without the requirement for potentially polluting heavy metal catalyst okay so if you go for a microbial system no need of using heavy metal catalyst because it is harmful chemicals which will pollute the environment the example for the transformation process or production of vinegar here conversion of ethanol to acetic acid is taking place and production of high value compounds including steroids antibiotics and prostaglandins also produced using this transformation process okay but the disadvantage of this transformation fermentation process is that a large biomass has to be produced to catalyze a single reaction so that but it is overcome by using immobilized cells so we can immobilize either the whole cell or the isolated enzyme which catalyze the reactions on an inert support okay the immobilized cells or enzymes may then be considered as catalyst and more advantage of using this immobilized system is you can use the immobilized cells or enzyme for many times okay so this is about the products which we are produced by using fermentation process so there are five major groups of products so one is microbial cells or biomass then microbial enzymes microbial metabolites then recombinant products and the products from the transformation process so now you come to know a clear idea about these products okay so in the next upcoming videos we will see about the fermentation processes okay thank you thank you for watching my videos please do subscribe and share if you like my videos